Hey, how's it going? Marconi here from CodeCloud. And today, we're diving into OpenAI's Agent Builder. You know, the so-called N8N killer that everyone's been talking about. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of Agent Builder yet, it's OpenAI's new platform that lets you build AI agents with minimal setup. Think RAG agents, custom tools, and conversational AI, all without writing complex code. Sounds pretty compelling, right? We're going to compare Agent Builder and N8N across three key areas, functionality, ease of use, and maintenance. By the end of it, you'll know exactly how Agent Builder stacks up against N8N and whether it actually lifts up to the height. So let's take Agent Builder for a spin. So in order to gain access to Agent Builder, you want to go to platform.openai.com slash agent-builder. So this is different from the usual chat GPT link that you want to go to. So once you get on it, depending if you've already signed up in the past before, if you haven't, what you want to do is to just get signed up and you'll be led to this dashboard where you can start creating workflow. Now, what you want to do is to just hit create. And the first thing that you notice, the default setup within the environment starts with two nodes, which is the start node, which is a trigger node, and the agent node. Now, with the start nodes, you can see this is by default a chat input node. So this is currently the only way that you can trigger a workflow. So if you're used to NNN's webhook triggers, schedule triggers, or email triggers, yeah, those aren't here yet. In fact, it does seem like it's more geared towards chatbot use cases because if you were to go back to the dashboard here, it says build a chat agent workflow with custom logic and tools. So you can sense that this is purpose built for one particular use case, which is chatbot. All right, so it's not very versatile unless they start developing new trigger nodes, new way of triggering the workflow for different types of automations. And I'm sure OpenAI will be working on that down the line, but for now it's pretty limiting. So going back to the workflow, what I want to point out is when you go to the Asian node here, so you can see it is pretty similar to what you see on NNN. You do have a system prompt field that you can type into. Currently, it's just a you are a helpful assistant. So you can change this depending on your use cases. But again, this is going to be chatbot functionality. And within the note, of course, you have the choice of including chat history, which is pretty similar to the memory context within NNN. And you can choose the model. You know, whether it's GPT-5 or not, I'm going to leave it as GPT-5 for now. Reasoning effort is also something you can specify whether you want it to be minimal to high. And under tools, this is where things get interesting, right? So under tools, you can actually attach a couple of different tools. Obviously, the biggest one here is the MCP server, which gives you the capability to get connected with external tools. However, I want to point out that currently the MCP functionalities are pretty limited as well as buggy. And if you go into just the Gmail MCP, you'll see that there are only two capabilities with the Gmail MCP, which is to search and read emails. Now, of course, that's not very useful because what I want an agent to do is typically send emails on my behalf and do other things, right? But one thing to note is that it is relatively a lot easier to connect the Gmail MCPs. What you do is you click on Get Access Token, and where you're led to is the Google OAuth page right here. and you can simply scroll down to Gmail API. And over here, you can see that there are a couple of functionalities or permissions that you can grant. So in this case, it has the send option here, but it doesn't work even if you were to select it. But I'm just going to select that. When you click authorized APIs, it's going to give you the key, which you can paste over in the access token here. But I'm not going to connect that because literally it's not very useful if you can only search and read emails at a moment. So it's something for obviously OpenAI to work towards. And again, with the current existing list of MCPs that are available here, you can see there's only a handful of tools and apps that are on here. Uh, of course, you have a choice of connecting it to your MCP server. And again, with the limitations of Gmail, what you can actually do is you can go to N8N, for example, and you can create your own MCP server. This is a simple MCP server with a Gmail tool connected, which allows you to send a message through Gmail. So it's a simple MCP server. And what you would do is you would just copy the URL here and go back to the MCP server details here and paste the URL in and fill up all the other stuff currently on N8N. I've chosen to have no authentication because this is just a demo, but then you can actually toggle this to none. And once you're connected, you can actually get access to send Gmail. However, the obvious question is, if I'm doing all of this already on NADN, then why wouldn't I just orchestrate the entire workflow natively on NADN? Why would I even need Agent Builder, right? So right now it's pretty limiting in 
the things that is available for us to use. But I just want to show you how you can connect to your custom MCP servers, even ones built on NNN. So right going back, the other tools that we see here, they're very interesting. And the highlight of Agent Builder, at least to me, is the file search tool. This is where it actually becomes a rack agent where you actually upload context and information that you wanted to take reference to or retrieve. So for example, here, I'm going to upload a standard operating procedure document. So I'm going to upload the SOP PDF. And how this PDF looks like is simply a document outlining the ticketing customer policies of a fictitious airlines called Air Nova. And it's just a couple of pages of document outlining, you know, ticket refund, reservation policies, etc. So here I want to name this you know, ticketing policies SOP. All right, I'm going to name the vector store that. As you can see, there is an option where you can select a vector store to attach if you already have an existing vector store. So that's really neat. And here, I'm going to just click attach. So there you go. That's just how easy it is to attach a memory context or a database to the agent. Meanwhile, with NNN, what you typically need to do is you first need to set up your own vector database, whether that's Superbase or Pinecone Vector. And probably you would have a workflow that might be similar to this, where you upload your files on Drive and then that gets upserted into Pinecone Vector. Or you can manually upload or upsert it directly from in a Superbase or Pinecone Vector store, right? And that's step one. And then step two, you might have something like this, where you have the AI agent attached to the Pinecone Vector store like this. And it's just not the most easy to use mechanism as opposed to just attaching it right on the tools on the Asian natively on OpenAI Agent Builder, right? Like this. So to me, that's the biggest win that I see for the Agent Builder. But again, coming back to the tools here, there's also the web search and code interpreter, which both are really useful web search. They can actually go out to the internet to do the search the way you would ask ChatGPT to go out to the internet search a particular topic. So in this case, because I've already attached the ANOVA ticketing policies, I just want to create a customer support chatbot here. So to show you guys how this would all work for ANOVA. So under the system prompt, instead of saying you're a helpful assistant, I would say you're a helpful customer support bot for ANOVA, your job is to answer customer queries about ticketing by referring to attach vector DB for the most accurate information. So I'm gonna give it something generic like that. And we're gonna hit preview to try it out. And for those of you who are just logging in the first time onto OpenAI platform, this may not be available. You need to do an organization review. What it is, is basically just you uploading your ID and then take a couple of photos of yourself. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. But preview is how you would test out the workflow as opposed to running a test run on any then, right? So here I'm going to ask, what is my ticket refund policy? Okay, so I'm going to ask it something like that. So as you can see, it's searching the refund policy details. It's actually using the file search capability, which is correct. It's good dipping into the vector database and getting me the most accurate answer. So there I go. It's telling me the refundability depends on your fare. So it actually gives me the citation as well from the document. Right now, there's only one document in the database. So, you know, it's not really helpful. But if you have multiple hundreds, thousands of documents, this is going to be helpful to let you know where it's getting the information from. Okay, so one other thing that's pretty cool is the guardrails node for options where it can actually help you mitigate some of the hallucinations and specify the moderation and even filter out personal sensitive information that might go through the workflow. So uh, this is something pretty cool and one of the wins as well in my books. Under the logic and data, it has the usual stuff, which is the if else while logic gate and the user approval, you know, having human in the loop, which is great as well, but already things that you can do on NNN. Well, in specific functionalities, it is obviously not as mature yet as NNN. NNN has been around for a while. It is something that OpenAI can work on. But I do want to touch on the structural aspect, which in the short term, not going to be able to be addressed. So one of which is the fallback model. As you may or may not know, on NNN, you actually can specify a fallback model where once you toggle on the enable fallback model in the AI agent, you can actually select 
another model, for example, the Anthropic Chat model or Olama or other LLMs, in case that OpenAI has gone down, your workflow is not going to carry out. Your workflow is going to continue to flow with the fallback model that you so choose. So that's a huge structural gap because, of course, using Agent Builder, you are relying on just one model, which is OpenAI. Not just as a choice, because sometimes, depending on your use cases, you might want to use Anthropic and Olama instead of just OpenAI, but also as a fallback, right, in case OpenAI runs into some issues, you want to be able to automatically toggle into another LLM so that your workflow does not fail. So that is a structural issue that is not easily addressable. Another thing that is not easily addressable is the fact that NNN is actually open source, so you can self-host it or in any environment you are choosing. And in fact, part of the course that we built for NNN will guide you through on how you can self-host NNN on top of a lot of other things like foundational knowledge and being able to build workflows step by step. So if you're interested in that, we're going to link the course down below. So do check that out, the NNN Zero to Hero course. But for whatever reason, if you were to want to self-host for security or control, you don't have that option here with Asian Builder. Obviously, it's hosted by OpenAI, so you have to be relying on them. And of course, for the UI itself, while it's super beginner friendly, it doesn't show the input and output data the way that NNN does. So it makes debugging and troubleshooting a lot more challenging, not as straightforward as compared to NNN. So it does feel that like NNN is geared more towards technical and developer tool versus the Asian builder is geared towards more just specific chatbot use cases and also super beginner friendly, easy to use segment. And on that note, it also does not have the debugging or error notification capabilities that NNN has, at least not currently. So for example, in NNN, you can actually set it such that if the workflow errors out, it can trigger another workflow which sends notification and stuff like that so that the maintainer can be notified and go into the workflow and be able to fix things, right? So right now, that's not readily available with Agent Builder. So in terms of functionality, definitely NNN takes the cake when it's compared to Agent Builder. Uh, in terms of ease of use, Agent Builder uh, definitely is much easier to use if you're not used to NNN and you're trying to choose a pure play no code tool. And of course, if you're only trying to build a chatbot currently, it is a lot easier as well because it does have the inbuilt chat kit. So you get a ready to use chat interface without having to build one yourself. Pretty convenient if you just want to deploy and share the chat agent quickly. And in terms of maintenance, as I pointed out earlier, it is pretty tough to maintain if you don't know kind of the granular details between the input and output data of the particular nodes, as well as not being notified or having another workflow triggered whenever an error occurs on your workflows and not having a fallback LLM in case OpenAI goes down. So, you know, maintenance might be an issue there. So I'm sure OpenAI is going to address a couple of these things and continuously improve. This is the first iteration, so I'm hoping to see much more improvements in the next version. But yeah, so here's the bottom line. OpenAI's agent builder looks awesome on the surface, but it definitely has its limitations. And I'm not nitpicking here. The workflow trigger options make it useful only for chatbot use cases. And it lacks a seamless integration to external tools. And even the MCP functionality is pretty buggy and limited. So it needs some serious work. That said, OpenAI is doing something pretty cool here. Give it a few more iterations, and this could actually become really powerful. But right now, it's not quite the end-to-end -end killer people are claiming it to be. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're interested to learn more about NNN, I have a course for you right here at Coke Lab, which not only covers practical build, but lets you practice in actual real life NNN environment risk free. So check it out in the link below. And as always, if you enjoy the content, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next one.